password hacking. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to hack into a server by cracking its password. And this is real world. You'll get a chance to do this yourself on my server. Also, this is for educational purposes only. Please don't go hack somebody else without their permission. Only hack me. You need to learn, learn, learn hacking. Okay, the goal here is to hack into this server, the coffee server. Why? Well, because once we do, we get free coffee. Coffee's awesome. Although you might need coffee for this, so go ahead and get it. Now, the good news is that we already have a username. The username is Dwight dot shroot, which is a great start, but what we don't have is the password. This is our mission. We're going to hack Dwight Schrute's password. And when I say hack, I also mean crack. Oh, and by the way, this is a real server that I want you to try and break into. Watch until the end, I've got a challenge, and the first five people to complete that challenge will win free coffee. Legit. All right, here we go. I want also a huge shout out to IT Pro TV, the sponsor of this video and my hacking journey. They're my primary learning source for learning things like this. So if you want to dive deeper, Check it out, link below. If you use my code NetworkChuck, you get 30% off forever. So yeah. So how do we hack this password? How do we crack it? Well, we can do it the old fashioned way, right? The good old Dwight Schrute method. Try zero, 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 zero. No. Okay, now try zero, 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 one. SSH Dwight dot Schrute at my host. And I just start trying passwords. Zero, 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 one. No, let's try it again, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0002. No, that's not right, let's try it again, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0003. Oh, let's try it again. <laughs> no, why would you keep doing that? There are better ways, and we can even automate this process to make it killer, check this out. So what we were just doing is traditionally called a brute force attack. We were gonna sit there and try every password under the sun until we found out Dwight's password, even if it took us five years. Not the most efficient use of our time. Now to be fair, Every attack I'm going to show you is technically a brute force attack, but we refer to them in different ways. But there are so many better ways, and we're going to open up some hacking tools right now, and they're amazing. Check this out. The first tool I want to show you is called Hydra. So fire up Kali Linux, launch a terminal, and we'll get going. We're going to use Hydra for an online attack, which basically means we're going to be trying our passwords on a live system. We'll be entering those passwords in the prompt and getting denied as we keep trying them. Now Hydra is going to do all the work for us. We'll enter our command in, step away, and done. But she's not going to do what we just saw, just trying every password under the sun, 0001, 0002. No, no, no. We're going to give her a list. A list of passwords that we think might be it. What we're doing here, providing Hydra with a list of passwords, is called a dictionary attack. And this is crazy effective because it has a list of common passwords that a lot of people might use. And we have a lot of passwords at our disposal. One list we have that's already built into Kali Linux is called the RockU password list. This company, RockU, got hacked back in 2009, and these hackers released all their passwords they found, which were stored in plain text. So now we get to use it. And this list is massive. Let's take a look right now. If I open another terminal here, if you're on Kali, you can find it in user share word lists, and there it is right there, rockyou.txt.gz. And we'll just unzip that real quick. sudo gzip-d, the file name, rockyou.txt.gz. And let's take a look at it. I'll cat the file right now. <laughs> look at that. So many passwords. I better stop it before my computer has a heart attack. There we go. Now, I will not be using that list. That list has 14 million passwords, but I do have my own list. Here is my word list things I think Dwight might use. So let's try it out. First, I'll specify my username. Now I could do dash uppercase L to specify a file name like usernames.txt and look through a list of names. Now I already know it's Dwight, so I can just do a lowercase L and put in Dwight.shroot. And then I'll specify my password file, I'll do dash uppercase P and my file, which I have named wordlist.txt. I'll do a backslash to move to the next line here. And then my host, which is 45 dot blah, blah, blah. And then the service type. Now, right now I'm accessing the server using SSH. So I'll specify SSH. It could be FTP, it could be Telnet, whatever. And let's go. Oh, password. It's all about passwords. Bam, you see how fast that was? I mean, the list wasn't big, right? But it found it, check it out. Here's the password, bears beats. And went through my list, tried each one, this is the one. Now this method is fun and useful, but let me tell you, if you're trying a bunch of login attempts, a bunch of passwords, firewalls might find you. You might get blocked. Plus you have timeouts, the account probably will get locked out. Not the best method. But we have another way, a better way. Check this out. Let's take our password hacking from online to offline. 
In this situation, we're not going to try and log into the server a million times. But how does that work? How do we know if it's going to be the right password if we can't actually try it? One word, hashing. What is that? Let's talk about it. You see, when Mr. Dwight Schrute created his password, Bears Beats, the server will take this password and store it in its database so that when Dwight logs in, they can go, oh, that is Dwight's password. Come on in, Dwight. But they don't store it like this in plain text. Like you won't log in and see Bears Beats. It won't be there. Actually, let me show you what it looks like right now. On that server, it'll look like this. This right here is Dwight's password. This crazy mess of numbers and letters is called a hash. So when Dwight created this password, Bears Beats, the coffee server hashed it. Basically put it in his mouth, chewed it up, and blah, spit it out. Looks like this now. Now it's a lot more complex than just chewing it up and spitting it out. Blah. For the server to turn Bears Beats into this, it uses these crazy hashing algorithms, which without getting too in the weeds on it, is just a crazy math problem function turning it into this. You might already be familiar with some of the hashing algorithms out there. Popular ones are MD5, SHA-256, you got NTLM on Windows. And if we were to somehow hack into the server via other means and get a list of all the username and passwords that look like this, it would do us zero good, no good at all. When Dwight logs in and he puts this password in, Bears Beats, the server takes this password, chews it up, spits it out, or in this case, runs it through its MD5 algorithm. And if the hash matches the hash stored in its database, you can go in, you're good. This should be how most websites and services out there are storing your passwords. Not in plain text, like the RockU server. No, no, it's hashed. So if they do get hacked and hackers get that list of usernames and passwords, they don't have your password yet. Here's what we can do. We may not have Dwight's password, but if we have his hash, if we somehow got that information, we can do some offline password cracking to figure out what it is. Now, again, we can't reverse engineer it, but we can brute force our way into it. We're going to do what we did before. We're going to take our word list and we're going to try and use each of these passwords. But instead of trying to log into the server, we're going to run that hashing algorithm. We're going to chew it up and spit it out. We're going to run that MD5 algorithm and see if it matches the hash we have for Dwight Schrute. So we'll take the first password, salesman of the year three, run it through. It looks like this. Doesn't match. We move on. We try password one, two, three, and we get this. Not a match, we move on. And we keep going until we find a hash that matches. And we'll try Bears Beats. And boom, this one does match A+. plus. Let's go, we got the password, let's hack into the system. Let's do this right now. Okay, here in Cali, we're gonna try out a tool called Hashcat. For this tool, we're gonna use two things. First, our word list, our list of possible passwords. And two, we'll need our file of hashes. Let's go ahead and create this real quick. Linux will store its hash passwords in the shadow file. So I'll grab that right now. And I'll just create that file. Paste all that stuff in there, save that. Now let's crack a password. The command will be sudo hashcat. Now, real quick, hashcat's pretty crazy. You can do a lot of stuff. I'm gonna show you the basics real quick. First, we'll start with the method, which we'll specify with dash a. Let's go to the manual page of our hashcat real quick. So we'll open up another terminal window and go to man and hashcat. A lot of stuff going on. Let me scroll through to where I'm talking about. So we used dash A, and here are the options. And if I talked about every one of these options, this video would be like four hours long. So I'm only gonna talk about option zero, the straight option, which is just going through a word list and doing what we just talked about. These other options, which I would ignore brute force, but combination, hybrid word list and mask, hybrid mask with word list, it's some crazy stuff. It's not just going through a word list, but it's auto-generating these crazy password lists and these password combinations and what password characters you can use. It can be intense. And perhaps as a video for another time, for now we're gonna talk about just a straight dictionary attack, option zero. So we'll put in zero. Now next is our hashing type. We'll put in dash M to specify that. Let's go back to our man page. Here we have our hashing types and there's a lot, <laughs> a lot of hashing types. And it's gonna be based on what type of password you're trying to hack. For example, if you know you're gonna be hacking Cisco, look at that, you'll enter the code 5700 in that option. For a plain Jane MD5, it'll be zero. 1000 for NTLM, which if you're hacking Windows-based passwords, that's what you'll use. And for our example, we're gonna be using 1800 for SHA-512 Unix passwords. So we'll put in 1800. I'm also gonna throw in a dash lowercase o and specify a file name, crackpasswords.txt. This is where it's gonna store the information we find out. And then finally, the two files we're going to be using, the first will be our hashes, which we named hashes.txt. And then our word list we're going to use, which was wordlist.txt. And that's all we need. Hashcat's about to spit some words out. Let's do it. Here we go. And, daggum, that was fast. <laughs> now again, the word list was not that big. 
and it found the password. If you look here at candidates dot number one, it gave us two options, Eminem <laughs> and Bears Beats. Now we know that Bears Beats is the correct password. So great job, Hashcat. Now let's try one more. Let's try a Windows based password. I'll do sudo Hashcat once more and do a dash A and specify, oh, not dash one, dash A and specify my method, which will be zero dash M. This time I'm doing NTLM for Microsoft Windows. I know this to be 1000 as the code by looking at the manual page. I'll do a dash lowercase o for cracked passwords.txt where I'm going to store my stuff and then my hash. Now I could specify a file. This time I'm going to specify the hash. I'm just going to copy that in there. So I'll just put that in quotes. So I got the one hash I'm looking for and then I'll put my word list in right here. Word list.txt and go. Now it's a bit wonky because it says the candidates right now are bears beats, which I know is not the password. But if we go to the top here, it says the session status cracked. It said it did it with this hash. Let's go look in that file we put that in. So I'll sudo cat crack passwords.txt. And let's take a look inside there. There it is. Okay, perfect. There's the hash I used. And there's the password for my word list that we matched up. And that was indeed the password. So now I have a challenge for you. I want you to use the skills you just learned in this video to hack or crack my server's passwords. The first five people to do this will win coffee. So link below, good luck. And if you don't win, that's fine. I'll keep this challenge up for probably a week or maybe two weeks. And I would love for you to let me know below what you think about it. And again, it's using the skills we just talked about here in this video. I'm gonna have you crack a password via the online method using a word list, using Hydra, bam, bam, bam automation. And then I'm gonna have you crack an offline password using a word list, a hash, a password hash, using Hashcat. Now there's a lot more to password hacking or cracking. I just scratched the surface here, but I wanted to get you started. Hashcat is a crazy program that you can use to do some, well, crazy stuff. If you have something like a beastly gaming PC, like this, this boy behind me, with a crazy CPU and a crazy GPU, you can do some serious password cracking, going through massive word lists. I'm talking millions and millions of passwords in these lists. Well, anyways, guys, that's about it password hacking, password cracking, whatever you want to call it. It's a powerful tool. And again, please do not use this in any way that's illegal, which let me be very clear, unless you have someone's explicit permission to do this, it's illegal. Hack yourself, hack your own passwords, hack me. I'm giving you permission to hack my, just the one server, <laughs> nothing else in my challenge. Otherwise, set up your own lab and do it in there. Do not use this for any illegal methods. But beyond that, I hope you like this video. If you do like it, like it. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button if you like what I'm doing here. Yep, that's about it. I'll catch you guys later.